Okay, that's what I'm going to try to address in this video is the squish band. This cylinder, the pour timings are pretty good. The squish is pretty good. It's down to 26 thousandths. I know in a previous video I said it was 32, but I went back and I double checked, which you should always do anyway. And I actually found that it's closer to 26 thousandths. The big issue that I'm having though is, is if you look at this pencil thin squish band, which for the purposes of what I'm doing, I could have dealt with, is the problem that the squish band isn't flat. It's actually beveled, going up, kind of cone shaped, if you would, going up toward the center of the cylinder. And I'm wanting to flatten that out, and if at all possible, maybe even widen it. I don't have a jig set up for my lathe in order to hold it and go in with a boring bar. And I don't have a milling machine. So the only way that I can really deal with this is that I've made a mandrel that's taking me with just shy of three thousandths of the cylinder. And I intend to try to use sandpaper or to level out that squish band it's going to cost me in some aspects it's going to help me on my intake duration if i'm successful in doing this my exhaust duration really doesn't matter because i have plenty of room to adjust on that however my transfer duration is where it's going to cost me if I take and I remove off of the base of the cylinder in order to bring the squish band back in and try to get it back down closer to 25,000 squish. I'm already having to take quite a bit off of the top of the transfers and I'm going to be pushing by doing this much. So it's just going to be trial and error, and we're just going to have to see how this turns out. Okay, I have lubricated the inside of the cylinder to try to protect it. I know a lot of people use wood, but I do not have a wood dowel that I can do this with. And it, uh, I'm sure it would have been a lot easier if I would have gone that route. But I'm going to just have to deal with what I have right here. So this is going to be the first attempt at trying to modify the squish band. Hoping everything goes well. And it appears as my sandpaper is just spinning. It's not actually turning and sanding against the cylinder. So I'm going to have to figure out a better way to get this to stick. I didn't find anything that uh, was adhesive back. You can see where it did do some around it. I might just have to take my time and allow the glue to dry a little bit more. I'm having to use 3M spray glue at this point to try to get it on there and 
keep it as thin as possible so it will be flat. I'll try one more time with this. Clicking in there, you're, you can see a slight banding in there, but I believe for the most part it is just slipping on the mandrel. Rather than sanding the uh, switch band. I'm just going with light pressure this time. Hopefully, it's bonding to the mandrel and sanding. I can't really tell over the sound of the motor whether or not it is. Holding a lot better on the mandrel this time, and it is in fact sanding. Band. But I believe I have completely impregnated the sandpaper with aluminum, so now I'm going to have to swap out to another piece of aluminum. By the way, if you're wondering, this is actually 220 grit sandpaper. And I'm actually thinking I should be going to something even coarser. It doesn't cut really fast like I thought it was going to. And as far as lubrication, I'm actually using two-stroke oil inside the cylinder and on the mandrel to allow it to slide in there. pick it up in the video or not, but you can see where it's loading the sandpaper right there. I would show you inside of here, but there's not going to be good enough light to be able to tell from where I'm at right now. It does appear to be clearing, cleaning it up. It's not really widening it. Like I said, I would have to go to, I believe, a coarser sandpaper in order to do that. But I think I'm going to let it go at this for right now. Clean it up. Put it back on the saw. And see if it's even affecting the swish band at all. And go from there. Okay, I've got the cylinder cleaned up and I've got it mounted again. We're going to find out if this experiment was an epic fail, and I believe it was. Um, but it was worth a try, if anything. This is from previous, right there. And if I go right near the very edge of it, at the end of it, I'm getting right around 26.5, 27 thou on it. 
I've got a feeling that I didn't change anything. But if you notice the taper on it right there, where you can see where the squish band was hitting it before, I was hoping to flatten that out some. But I have a feeling I really didn't change much. So we're going to find out together. I plan on picking up a larger lathe in two months, which is going to make things much easier on me on this. This little six inch lathe is at its limits with everything I've done with it, but I've learned a lot with it. We'll take a measurement and see what we end up with. As you can see, uh, even to my surprise, picked up about one and a half thousandths in there but it was a lot of work to get to that there's a lot easier ways to do it take a closer look at it it is flatter where squish band is hitting it, it doesn't seem quite as tapered as before, at least to me. So we're going to adjust and go from there. I noticed when I was doing some video editing on some of that previous stuff that I messed up the quality of my video. Hopefully I have that fixed now I changed some settings back. I was just trying to shrink the file size some. Then I also noticed that I failed to show the inside of the cylinder once I was done. The cross hatching is still just like it was before I started doing all of this. So the aluminum did not hurt it in any way. And I'm wanting to show you here in just a second, once I get that screw out, and this one out, that if you remember at the very beginning of the video, you could look at the squish band and notice that it didn't go all the way to the edge of the cylinder. And I'm wanting to show you now that that has changed, that it actually did, sanding actually did make an effect on it, and it took it all the way to the edge of the cylinder. So hopefully I can get this to where you were able to see it. Got very poor lighting. But if you go back and you look at the beginning video, I'll try to get this braced up good and solid so it can have a chance to focus. light in there for you. The squish band is all the way to the edge of the cylinder now. Get it to focus well enough for you.
I'm doing all of this stuff on a cell phone. I, I do have a better camera, I just haven't taken the time to set it up. So it did in fact widen it out just a little bit, not much. But it got rid of that ring around the very outer edge right there that you could see before. And like I say, it's this camera isn't that great, but the cross hatch is just fine in here. I don't know if you can see that there or not. It did not affect it in any way, the aluminum mandrel.